Is your R5C also running out of battery too quickly? It surely is an awesome camera, but the power consumption is huge, especially for recording 8K 60fps footage. So let's dive into the different external battery options and how to mount them on a handheld rig and on a gimbal. Before we talk about external batteries, adding one has the obvious disadvantage that it ruins the small form factor of the R5C. So if your shooting style only involves the camera itself and maybe a microphone, then you might want to just get a couple of more LPE6 and H batteries. Make sure not to use the regular LPE6 batteries because they only have a fraction of the capacity. Then there's the battery grip for the R5 that also works with the R5C. It's not a completely different battery system, it's actually just the holder for two batteries and it slides into the camera's internal battery slot, so the grip effectively offers you one additional battery slot which allows you to double your shooting time. However, this will not allow you to record 8K RAW at 60fps with electronic lenses. In this case, the camera will say that the lens is not working and since RF lenses work totally by wire, you cannot control the focus anymore with the ring, let alone enable autofocus. If you use a manual lens though, everything is fine, but in the other case, you definitely need an external power source. The camera gives you two options for that. The first one is the USB-C port, which supports power delivery or PD. It's the same thing that is used by many laptops like Apple MacBooks and I actually love the fact that this same power adapter for my computer can be used to charge and power the R5C as well. So if you have a MacBook, there is no need to get the separately sold Canon power adapter at all. Once I connect the MacBook adapter to the camera, there's a little PD icon on the display, which indicates that it's working. Now, this power delivery feature also allows you to use a battery or power bank. There are many different ones available from the computer world, like the Anchor 747. The challenge here is to mount them on the camera. Luckily, there are clamps like the small rig universal power bank holder. There are also power banks dedicated for camera use, like the FX Lion or Watson Pro, and some others. They have a V-mount, and these seem to be the most stable options. I will talk about mounting the batteries in a minute. But a general downside of using a power bank is that the USB-C connector is not very stable. If you're someone who dislikes the micro HDMI port on the R5C, the USB-C port is probably not something you want to use for power supply. On the other hand, using a USB-C port as a power source allows you to hot swap the battery, because the internal battery jumps in immediately when the USB-C port is disconnected. So this can be an advantage. The second option for powering the R5C is using a dummy battery. It slides into the battery slot and has a DTAP plug on the other side that can go into any DTAP battery. There are some for the R5 that also fit into the R5C, but those ones might not allow you to record 8K RAW at 60 frames per second, because they provide the same voltage like the real batteries, which is 7 volts. What you need though is one that provides 9 volts. The one I'm using is from Alvin's Cables. It's quite new and has been made specifically for the R5C. Other ones might appear soon, so make sure to check the video description, because I might have added more products by the time you watch this. There are many different DTAP batteries available, so I will not go into the details here. However, they are usually quite big and heavy, but some are not. I'm using the Moman Power 99 V-mount battery that is quite small, but still has 99 watt hours. And with that, I get a shooting time of several hours in my tests in XFAVC 4K. So in order to decide if you want to use a USB-C power bank or a DTAP battery with a dummy battery, you have to think about if you need hot swapping, if you dislike the unstable USB-C plug, and if you might need the USB-C port of the camera for something else, like a gimbal. We'll talk about that later. One general hint when testing and using external batteries. The R5C shows an estimation of the remaining shooting time, but that prediction only works with the internal battery, but not with a dummy battery or a USB-C power bank. The reason for that is that a voltage stabilizer is involved here to convert the voltage of the battery to the required voltage of the camera. The DTAP batteries have 14.7 volts, while the camera only accepts 9 volts. And that's why the dummy battery has an electronic circuit that reduces the battery's voltage to be always exactly 9 volts on the camera. While a battery is discharging, its voltage goes down. That's normally measured by the camera to estimate when it's going to be empty. The voltage stabilizer in the dummy battery, however, always provides 9 volts exactly and just stops working abruptly when the external battery is too low. 
so you have to make sure to check the charge indicator of the external battery itself. Unfortunately, that does not have a shooting time estimator, so you will have to guess that yourself. Product idea. Make a dummy battery that does not provide a stabilized voltage, but a relative voltage, so that the camera could understand the external battery's charge state. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Whether you decide to use a USB-C power bank or a dummy battery with a DTAP plug, the next challenge is to mount the battery to the camera. There are obviously many different ways you do this. The main question is, I think, how big of a rig do you want to carry around and in which position do you want the battery to be? Should it be at the bottom or behind the camera, somewhere on the top of it? Let's go through it. A very simple solution is the Core SWX Powerbase because it has a quick release system built in. You can just screw the quick release plate to the bottom of the camera and then attach the battery. It does not have USB-C, so you will need a dummy battery, as we discussed before. A very cheap solution is the Anchor Power Core. It's not really camera equipment, but a regular power bank for USB-C, so it has no screw holes, V-mount or anything, but with a small rig universal power bank holder, you can make it work. However, my favorites are V-mount batteries that you mount using a V-mount plate. One of the cheapest options for that is the small rig mini V-lock assembly kit, and there are numerous DTAP batteries like the Moment Power 99 and some power banks like the FX Lion and Watson Pro that are compatible with this. So as we said, the easiest way to mount the battery is putting it under the camera, because that's where the camera has a screw hole. A downside of that is that you cannot mount it on a tripod anymore. So I think this works great if you shoot just with camera and with very little accessories. You can also attach the battery to the hot shoe using Small Rig's cold shoe adapter, but I would not really recommend that. Instead, you should get a cage for the camera, which then offers a wide range of mounting options that are actually stable. And even if you want to mount the battery to the bottom of the camera and you have been using a top handle in the camera's hot shoe, I would also recommend a cage and mount the top handle to that because those camera hot shoes are not so stable to carry very much more than the camera itself. I have the regular small rig R5 cage that also works for the R5C. There is also the Black Mamba cage specifically for the R5C, but I personally like the original one better. The only disadvantage is that the button number 8 is a bit hard to reach, but you get those additional mounting points in return. What I like best is to have the battery behind the camera. This still allows me to mount the rig on the tripod and leave space on top of the camera free for my top handle and microphone. And the battery on the back side acts as a counterweight for the lens, which is a very good side effect. In my first attempt for this, I used two rods, a quick release clamp, a V-mount plate and a quick release plate for the bottom. This looks like this. The camera cage can be attached easily using the integrated Arca Swiss plate. The downside of the setup is that you cannot reach the internal screen as easily anymore. You always have to open the clamp and take the camera out. It might not be a big deal, however I got this hinge from small rig that allows me to fold down the battery so that I can access the screen. This is a lot safer because both parts of the rig stay connected at all times. The battery sits a bit too high in my opinion, so it would be great if small rig modified this hinge a bit so that the battery would not reach over the viewfinder, but besides that it works great. I often use an external monitor and other devices on the rig that also need power from the battery. And that's why I got this DTAP splitter from Zitai and mounted it below the battery using this angled piece from small rig. The cable of the splitter is normally longer, but I shortened it myself. As far as I know, you can contact Zitai before you buy it and tell them the custom length you would want. Mine is 14 centimeters long and it fits perfectly with the Moment battery. Now let's talk about using the R5C with an external battery on the Ronin RS2. First of all, the Ronin does not power the R5C when you connect it via USB-C, because that port does not support power delivery. It is only meant for controlling the camera. And unfortunately, if you connect the camera to the gimbal, you cannot connect a USB-C power bank anymore. So you either live without the camera remote functions of the gimbal, or you use a dummy battery. Right now, the Ronin RS2 does not support the R5C yet, but this will hopefully be fixed soon by DJI. There is a dummy battery made by Zitai that you can plug into the Ronin's USB-C port. Then the camera is powered by the Ronin battery. I don't have this, but I've read that this leads to a shooting time of about 2 hours with a standard battery grip. 
Of course, there are power solutions for the Ronin RS2 that extend or replace the standard battery, like the Tilter dual handle power supply bracket, which allows you to use a V-mount battery. I'm a fan of one battery for everything, so this is very nice. I'm working on a similar setup based on small rig parts, but this is a story for a different video. Obviously, all of this makes the rig heavier and more expensive. An alternative would be to use a D-tap or USB-C extension cord and just put the battery in your pocket or on a belt clip. So you can carry the battery on your body, or if you want to have the battery on the gimbal, there is also the Tilta Power Pass through plate kit to mount it under the camera. And if that's too expensive, then I have a low cost alternative for this. All you need is the small rig mini V-Log assembly kit and this cold shoe holder from eBay. With that, you can attach the V-mount plate to this cold shoe on the bottom of the Ronin arm. This is not the most stable solution, but definitely usable. As I said before, I'm actually working on a dual handle rig that would then also hold my field monitor. But for now, this is good enough. I can really recommend it. If you have a camera cage, you could also mount the battery on top of the camera. I hope I could give you some inspiration. I've put all the parts into the video description so you can check them out. Let me know if there are other ways to power the R5C that you like better. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more videos like this, please subscribe. See you next time.